sense of mass layoffs in WWE. We've been expecting this day to come. And there's going to be more. There's more that are, are going to come out. And it's had the wrestling world, world talking, buzzing. And, of course, fans of respective promotions are like, who are we going to see in our favorite promotion? Promoters, owners, they say, who can we bring in? So, of course, I've got to weigh in on, on this list that's come out so far. A uh, pretty extensive list. And, who, and and talk about who's a fit for Impact Wrestling. Who could they bring in to to freshen up this product where at times can get very stale because visually they do nothing to update it. So we have to rely on the wrestlers who come in to give us something different. And you go on social media and you you already see that the, you know, the faithful and then some of the delusional say, you know, Dolph Ziggler and Shelton Benjamin come to impact wrestling. So let's go over this list here. I'm going to talk about who's realistic and who's not. And I, I've always tried with this channel to be a voice of reason and have some common sense. And people take that as, as negativity a lot of the times. But, um, of course, we want to shoot for the stars, but we have to be realistic as well. Okay. So let's stop at the start at the top of the list here. Dolph Ziggler, two-time heavyweight champion, two-time U.S. champion, six-time intercontinental champion. I think he was in the company with the company for 18 years or so. You can just cross him off your list right now. Just, just go ahead and do it. There is a certain type of wrestler that Tony Khan goes for, and it's anyone who has a cool factor about them. If they have some degree of cool factor with the wrestling audience, he is going to do his best to bring that person in. So I would just cross him off your list. If Tony Khan employs his less better looking, less talented, less over brother, you don't think he's going to bring in Nick Nemeth. So, and that's a company that right now they lost CM Punk. They've got money to spend. And they need a jolt of energy bad. Live events are down. TV's down. They need him. So just just stop, okay? In that same breath, let's talk Shelton Benjamin, U.S. champion three-time, Intercon champion three-time, 24-7 champion, three-time tag team champion. There's a lot of 24-7 champions on here. But considering that's probably a step above the digital media championship, uh, I guess that's okay. I would cross this guy off your list as well, but could they do a one-off with him? And I don't mean three months, six months, some impact plus shows. I mean, a one off. I think they could, and I think they should, I think they should do whatever it takes to get him in the ring with Josh Alexander. I don't know if it's on free TV. I don't know if it's impact plus. I don't know if it's hard to kill. I don't know. I would do whatever you need to do. To get a high-profile match of Shelton Benjamin versus Josh Alexander. Josh is our guy in Impact. He's the standard bearer. He's the golden boy. He is a relative unknown outside of the Impact bubble. Jim Cornette was running down the PWA top, uh, PWI top 500 recently. He came across Josh, Josh Alexander, had no clue who he was. And this is a guy, the biggest critic in wrestling, who goes out of his way to find people who can work. I don't know if he goes out of his way. He doesn't want to watch that much wrestling, but he he knows who can work and who can't work. And Josh should be someone on his radar, and he has no clue who he is. And he's a very influential person in the wrestling world, whether you like him or not. And that just shows, you know, that, that just showed to me, I was like, yo, people don't know him. You got to get a match for Sheldon Benjamin. I don't care what it what it takes, you do it. But is he going to be around long term? No, absolutely not. Elias, four-time 24-7 champion. I know he had the the gimmick with the guitar. I think AEW has too many people who sing and play instruments and do this and this right now. They could bring him in. Uh, I, but I know he had the uh, Elias Ezekiel gimmick. Uh, he was doing some work with Kevin Owens. And I know he is fairly over, g- g- generate some heat. I remember seeing him a little bit towards the tail end of me watching NXT. And of course, I should have prefaced, which I, I stopped watching WWE in 2015 consistently. I'll order the Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, maybe WrestleMania, maybe a SummerSlam, a couple of pay-per-views here and there. And then I got my ear to the streets a little bit as well. But do I know everything about these wrestlers? No, I don't. 
but uh, I have a little, you know, I do remember Elias a little bit. You know, you, I, he could work. He could work in Impact. He could bring the guitar with him. These next couple names here, and and I don't want to offend anyone who likes these guys. Riddick Moss and Rick Books. When I ordered the W the course WWE, when I ordered the Royal Rumble several several years ago, and these guys came out, and uh, albeit not together, came out separate, I said, "Who the fuck are these guys?" Mad Cat Moss and and Rick Bugs. When I was watching WWE, these guys would have never been on my screen. There was just nothing about these guys that yelled that screamed to me WWE superstar main roster guys. I saw nothing in these guys. Now again, I don't know shit about WWE. All I can do is it's is just the eye test, first impression. And I know Rick Books does the guitar thing, or he has a little bit with Shinsuke Nakamura. I just personally saw nothing in them. They're both Rick Riddick Moss, twenty four seven champion. Rick Books, two times twenty four seven champion. These are, but these are guys you might be able to bring in and do something with. You know, they got the the size. I just don't. I didn't care for the look, or I didn't see anything about them that stood out in my opinion. Let's talk some women, Aaliyah. She, you know, we talk about Dolph Ziggler being there 18 years or whatever. Aaliyah has been there probably nine or 10 years. Her and Dana Brooke. She'd been there longer than Dana Brooke a little bit, but she was in developmental forever. And I mean, the developmental, developmental, like not on TV. And, you know, they eventually brought her along. And, you know, my opinion, I do think Impact has to bring in some of these women, bring in some hotties to the roster. I, you know, I'm not saying the current group isn't attractive in their own right or sexy in their own right, but I think there's so much of a focus on the the wrestling product. I think you got to bring in some girls for just to diver- diversify things a little bit. That just look phenomenal. Um, Aaliyah is one of those that I would bring in. Now she you, she can't bring that name with her. Her real name she probably couldn't use either because it's very difficult. So I don't know. You, it's it's kind of one of those people you got to rebrand a little bit. And Impact does their best when they allow someone to come in, rebrand themselves a little, and and run with it. EC3 will always be the best example. But someone who comes in and and says, I want to do something different. Because when these wrestlers tweet out, oh, I'm excited for the future, they know that they're not going to make the same money. They know they can make good money. they got to work harder for their money. But it's because now they can, they can use their ideas that they had, the ones that WWE said no or, or wouldn't listen to. You know, they, they've got, they they know what they want to do. They know how they want to come across on TV and not have to read a script. You know, so you take a chance. Like, those are the ones who succeed with the Impact audience, Will, W. Morrissey's and, and, and guys like that. When they bring in the Dirty Dangos, Matt Cardona's, and they want them to be the WWE gimmick, that's when it doesn't work. Like, Matt Cardona was doing all this amazing stuff on the indies, GCW, NWA. Impact brought him in and wanted him to be Zack Ryder. They brought in Dango, and even though he's doing some good, really good work right now, they wanted him to be Fandango. And they did it with Brian Myers and Rhino, I'm excuse me, uh, Heath and Rhino. Come do the Heath and Rhino shtick. Come do the I Got Kids shtick. Uh, Brian Myers, they, they've, he's kind of done his own thing, and that it works. Like you bring in, bring in guys, let them rebrand themselves a little bit, and they can take off. So names like this, Aaliyah, Dana Brooke, who's next on the list here. Dana Brooke been there forever. Athletic is all hell. Been there forever, and at least Aaliyah won a tag team champion. Dana Brooke, fifteen time, twenty four seven champion. Get the hell out of here. She never won anything. I'm a lot higher on her than people probably are. I think she's very good um, or it has the potential to be at least. And I really think she has the potential to be at the top of the knockouts division. I don't mean above Jordan Grace, above Deanna Perazzo, but in the, in the mix, I do. And she's, again, someone you can bring in, Ashley, whatever, repackage them a little bit, let them do what they want to do, get something fresh out of them, and they could do wonders for the impact division. Tennille Dashwood's next on the list. That's one of the one people people are talking about. Tennille Dashwood. 
had this failed Emma return. And she did good work with Impact. They brought her in as a baby face initially. It was a complete train wreck. And I got on this fucking channel and said, why isn't she an Instagram influencer? And then all of a sudden, I'm not taking credit for it, but all of a sudden they bring her in with Caleb with a K. And it works like I knew it would. And I remember initially they were doing the influence with Alicia Edwards that lasted two weeks so that um, she could be Eddie Edwards' wife in an angle, which infuriated me at the time. But then they initially, I mean, eventually brought in Madison Rain from her 90th retirement and they created influence and it was a lot of fun with Caleb with a K and they did excellent work. So I think common sense says Tenille could come back. I don't know how close she actually is to Madison Rain, so I don't know if Madison can pull strings for her, but I don't get the impression AEW is really that interested in her. But she did great work in Impact. She could get a knockouts title run. I thought that she should have had one. So I would bring her back. I would bring her back, you know, honestly, and and it wouldn't be the influence, but team her with Dana Brooke. They have great chemistry together. They did great work in NXT together. A little bit on the main roster, but not really anything of note. Um, you know, just a few matches here or there, but you bring them into a, a division that needs bodies. Like we can only watch MK Ultra versus Giselle Shaw and Savannah Evans so many times. I would love if they brought them in as a tag team. So when I look at these lists, I, I, I look at the, the the women first because the knockouts division is still the place to be for the females. You go into AEW, you get you know the Ty Valkyries and, and Athena's, your, your hot the flavor of the month for about 30 days, and then you're nothing. So, um, you know, you, you come in Impact and you used to be in WWE. Impact is going to fuck with you, you know. But the women are the ones I'm really, really looking at. Um, who else we got? We got Mustafa Ali here. People have been talking great for the X Division. I think he, yeah, that, that, that's a fair assessment. I think I'm, I'm 50-50, maybe 60-40 with 40% being Impact on him coming in. But he is someone that appears to kind of march to the beat of his own drum. So he might say, I want to do the indies. I want to do the smaller companies. He would be the X Division championship champion within a month. I know that much. Um, who else we got? Top Dalla. That's, a, that's someone you can probably put on your list. I know he Impact was pretty close to bringing him in before WWE rehired him. And I thought WWE did him a, a disservice with Michael Cole calling him Flop Dalla and... Uh, you know, the commentary team putting themselves over at the expense of the talent and making them look like fools. And I understand he's not the best worker in the world, but I thought they WWE did a lot to destroy their brand. I can see him in impact. The AW is not going to bring him in, but they're not. Mason Mansoor, hear me out. This male model gimmick can work in impact. There's some gimmicks that work in small companies, some that work in big companies. I know they weren't like a real over. They had some moments in WWE, but this gimmick, you can check out Mansoor's uh, Twitter. He, he cut a promo after the release. That was excellent. Um, it just shows that guys with WWE trading are just light years beyond people at impact when it comes to promos. And, you know, you bring a, a group in like this to the tag team division, which has seen a resurgence. They can get over with the impact audience. And on the indie scene, like the, that is the place for them. I really, truly think so. So I, w- I would bring them in. And then we got Shanky, who did, you know, stuff with Veer and, and Jinder Mahal. I know pretty much nothing about him. I don't, you know, he's from India, so Impact's going to look at him. And there's some other names, Daba, Kato, Quincy Elliott, kind of a strange looking fella. Um, Bryson Montana, who looks like a star. Dude, if, if this is the one I'm thinking about, um, Really looks like a star, a potential star for a smaller company. Ulisa Leon, Daniel MacArthur, Kevin Ventura Cortez, Alexis Gray, Brooklyn Barlow, Eichmann Euro. I don't know who these people are. I don't know if they've ever been on NXT TV or not. I have not a clue in hell. But I would look at guys, you know, if I'm the Impacts, the MLWs, the NWA, some of these guys here that have a, a high degree of training with promos and, and, things of that nature, you know, yes, they were in the WWE bubble, but they're still going to be light years beyond um, guys you bring in off the indies when it comes to being television ready. 
And this is where I would take swings if I'm impact. Some of these people, if again, if Bryson Montana is the one I'm thinking of, a real jack looking athletic guy, you bring him in and and see what throw some shit at the wall, see if it sticks. Instead of trying to take these swings at the top of the card, we're gonna go for Dolph Ziggler. Like bring in some of these guys that you take advantage of the training they received at WWE and see if you can make something of them. Uh, I, I think that's just a great pool of talent for small companies to pull from. I would also look at guys who release from marketing, from production, uh, live events. Those are some of the people I'd really look to bring in and freshen up your product and freshen up how the people backstage think and how they feel wrestling should be presented or promoted or marketed. Guys from the social media, so you're not paying people from other countries peanuts to run your YouTube account. Guy, you know, th- these are these are people who come from the most successful company in the world. So they don't have you don't have to dip in the wrestling pool. See see what else is available out there. Guys off the screen who can make a real difference in the product. But yeah, going over the list, top dollar I think is the one that's very realistic. Mason Mansoor Dana Brooke, Tennille Dashwood, and Aaliyah are the ones I would bring in, or I would attempt to at least. Who knows if you if you can? And we know Rick Boogs is um not Rick Boogs. I'm sorry. Uh, Riddick Moss is the fiance of Tennille Dashwood. She had another boyfriend like a year ago that was outside of wrestling. So this this girl moves very fast. But um, maybe that's a connection you can bring in. And um, maybe they do some mixed tag work with Eddie and Alicia or, or Frankie. And no, no I, let's not say that Tracy Brooks not going to wrestle again. But there's connections. There's some connections with these wrestlers here where they can stick together. And maybe that's a, a negotiation point. So those are my thoughts, folks. Leave your thoughts in the comments about who you think is, you know, realistic targets for impact and who's not realistic and anything else you want to say.